for an adult audience. Love, love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey everybody, it's the Love Line. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician. This is Passive Love Line is so much more pleasant with those nuts that Lauren got us. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. I'm going nuts for the nuts. And then, did you notice a little trouble with the off ramp on the way in tonight? Yeah, what was that? I, I... <laughs> they closed, normally they closed the whole thing. This time they closed. One lane till they get you on the off ramp, then they close the opposite lane. Here's all I know. All I know is in I've lived in Southern California my entire life. Oh. Uh, I've never had an off ramp of uh, a work or home or business, a loved one that was closed for anything longer than a weekend. The uh, the best you can do when you're shutting an off ramp is uh, shut it off for a weekend. Uh, you touch up the paint, maybe you resurface it. The off-ramp that we need to use, and, and believe, don't think I'm not thinking about the great magnet and his plans for me oh, yeah. and what he's doing to me. Uh-huh. Because the, 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 we, since we moved studios five months ago, this goddamn off-ramp has been good three days out of the five months. This is our off-ramp. This is the off-ramp we would get off yeah. if we were trying to get to work. So instead, I have to take the off-ramp that's past it. Now, you may say, why don't you take the one before it? No. Trust me, you, yeah. you wouldn't do that. You just go past it, then you turn, and then you backtrack. Left That's arrow. when you hit the arrow. Yes. So you understand that I'm being fed into the arrow? Yes. Like, you have to, and it's, and it's now you pretty much have to wait my, for my, my, I mean, I, look, none of, look, I don't believe in God, but what about the great magnet? Like, <laughs> just you just think about it. Anyone who listens to the shows know I spent the last five years complaining about all the goddamn red arrows I had to endure in that crap uh, dump asshole called uh, Culver City for the last five years. Finally, we move. No more re- no more arrows. I just get off my off ramp and I'm right at work. Now nope, this off ramp's not going to be working for about a year. <laughs> what, like in what universe is an off ramp on a freeway closed for a year? It's uh, no signs opening up either. And- it's, just, it's not. Here, here's work. the greatest mystery of all that uh, I guess is living proof of the great magnet. Nothing seems to be going on on that off ramp other than it's closed. It's closed so that right? a hole Adam can get an arrow put in his way. What? No, no, there's nothing going on. Now I just have to go around and then I and then I drive past work and I sit there waiting at the arrow so I can make a U turn and F- double. For those back. of you that feel our pain, what's it's the Fairfax Washington right? Yeah, exit off the one at the Hen yeah. Freeway. Going, it's going good times. West. It's good times. All right. So anyway, tonight the second off ramp that I normally get on. Oh, was that the second packed. one? I didn't really pay attention anymore. Yeah, oh yeah, you're right. The second one. Yeah, the first one was closed. Second one was down to one lane. That's right. And the line went all the way back up the freeway. So I just uh, went past that. And let me let me just say a couple quick things. You know, because you know my theory. You know what I want. I don't want more freeways. I don't want a monorail. Move your ass. I, yeah, I don't want to widen anything. I want people to start shaking their ass. Uh. Yeah. Case in point, if you're the lead guy, like if it's a situation where there's a long off ramp, one of the one of the lanes is closed off, and now there's a line, single file line of cars going all the way back a quarter mile onto the freeway. If you're the lead man who uh, is waiting at the signal, you and your response and your alertness, this is the difference between 14 cars going and five cars going. When that signal changes, and you do that. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Miss, and then you start going. You're effing everyone behind you. That lead position, yes, you need to be. The a vigil needs to be held. Turn the radio down. Put the hands at ten and two. Whatever it takes. Slap yourself in the face a little there while it's red. Get prime. Yeah. Maybe give the engine a few revs. That's that's the scout position. You're running point for the whole platoon. You got to get on it. Is it, Drew, does it drive you berserk when you're like car number nine in the back? The signal changes. It's just, just that one 1,000. Drives me two insane. Two 1,000. It's like, really? I, I'm number nine. What? Number two, I'm going crazy. You're, but I... you're taken by surprise that the signal changed? What, what, how does this go? You just get in your car and you just sort of like, oh, I wonder why I stopped. Oh, well, as long as I stopped, I might as well occupy myself. No, No telling. No telling. Uh, let's see. Let me go through my purse here. What's in the glove box? Maybe I got an old Connect 4 game. Huh? What's this? The signals change? Huh. 
Well, let me put my stuff back and kind of get myself together. <clears throat> well, it's caught me off guard. I guess I guess I can proceed now. Really? Are you, don't you know it's just going to be about 45 seconds and then you've not been through the cycle before? Then, they, off. then they, they proceed as though they're not crossing an intersection that has a light. Yeah, that, it's, it's so, like, right. all right, well, the strange device with the lights, the colored lights, it's turned, it's changed. It, it used to be a red color, now it's a green color. But let's not trust this technology completely. I'll very slowly creep out, looking left and right. Ooh, these people on the left seem to be stopped. How I, interesting. I guess it's I okay guess. for me to proceed. Well, again, they, again, they, a very cautious go, yeah, speed. It could go any second. What? What's going on? I know. What, are people just that far out of it? Or are they not? What does everyone have? Like a pain in the ass wife that they don't want to get home to, or like a kid with whooping cough? What's waiting at home that they don't want? What's there? The, what, what about TiVo? What about the loves of uh, TiVo and uh, chunky peanut butter and pornography? Should you be hustling home? Aren't you running late for work or something? Really? It just. Uh, then, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. I got behind somebody and I knew, I knew this is trouble. When I see the jumbo pack of Kleenex, the jumbo box of Kleenex sliding around on the back Ooh. where the speakers are, yeah, bad. That, that's trouble. I, I, that's deduct 15 miles an hour from, yeah. from their speed. I don't know why. First off, I'm not sure what the Kleenex box uh, six feet back from where you are does to you I, while, while you're driving. Obviously, you can't get to it. But somehow it's that jumbo one. It signifies and, and it just sort of slow. Yeah. You know what it is? Because... That Kleenex box wouldn't last on my car because it would go sailing across my first yeah. good no, this, maneuver. It's the same thing as the big triangle on the Amish cart. It, the buggy, the carriage, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that lets you know it's time to start moving around. Yeah. All right. Now, Drew, I just, I, just want, I just want a campaign in this city. Just simply, just shake your ass. <laughs> shake your ass. Everybody, shake your ass. Get it going. Mach Schnell, pick it up. Everyone, just pick it up 25%. If you're going 33, go 39. Work on those reaction times when that light changes. Let's go. If you miss your off ramp, you can't stop and try to wedge in. You got to keep going and come around. Everybody, go. We'll get the whole city moving. Don't have to build any more freeways. Good Is times. this a crazy plan? No, I don't think so. No, it's it's like we can't build a new factory, so we're going to speed up productivity in the one we have. No, no problem. Any problem? We're going we're gonna to speed up the conveyor belt just a little bit. That's all. 20% speed that up. Start plucking them chickens faster. Curtis, speaking yeah. of chickens. What's up? He's in <clears throat> Iowa. Oh. Yeah, I'm from Hubbard. Uh, I was wondering, do you know anything about rainbow parties? I have, I've heard about these things, but you know, I think this is... Uh, this has got to be something trumped up by the media, the news media. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I think it is... Uh, I, I think it's a wives' tale where what uh, young girls are supposed to go in there and like uh, something with BJ's. I remember hearing BJ's and liking the notion. Well, they're supposed to go in there and like give. They're supposed to have like different colored lipsticks, and they're supposed to give so many guys a blowjob, and uh, whoever gets the most colors on their dick gets. Where'd you hear about yeah. this? I, I it goes around. Um, I, I heard I, I hear this about in it. school. In and school. Then, like, on the internet, and then I found it on the news on News Channel Eight. Yeah, well, oh, eight, Adam. Are you watching eight tonight? Well, if it's on eight, it's eight, eight, eight out of Des Moines. In Des Moines. Yeah. Well, that's, that's that's where I get my news. <laughs> <laughs> I got my satellite fixed to uh, eight in Iowa. All right, look, here's the thing. It, it's it's not. I'm, it's not to say there's not a, de- a lot of uh, disgusting, debaucherous stuff that goes on with uh, you know teenagers these days. Yeah. But just think about a penis. Think about how the penis works. Think about lipstick works. First off, you're. you're yeah, it's, Your dark's it, not going to look like and, a rainbow. And somebody conceived of this, and maybe somebody tried to coerce somebody to doing something like this. And then the media, ooh, everyone's doing this. This is Rain, the latest rainbow thing. Rainbow parties. Please. And how do you plan those? Yeah. Hey, you get a Pretty flyer. Yeah. Hey. And then how many guys show up at the rainbow party? <laughs> 6,000. 6,000 guys. Three, uh, like two chicks, a transvestite, and a hermaphrodite show up. <laughs> right. Right. Rainbow party. Hey, hey, before we take more calls, we got to talk about this cabin, cabin fever promotion. Yeah. Because everyone that comes on our show tonight and for the next five days gets a free 
DVD of the movie Cabin Fever. Mm-hmm. This apparently is a got uh, all the special behind the scenes stuff and yeah. uh, interviews with the cast well, and whatnot. I, I could tell you about it myself if I had one. I know. They, they'll DVDs. be bringing us one soon. Yeah, it's, that's uh, great. I, that's right. Give it. Give us the whole promotion and don't give us the FNC the DVD. Everyone has to be over eighteen, Idiots. eighteen or over. Uh, and it, this DVD itself goes on sale January 20th. But this is the cool part. Yes. If those of you that get the DVDs tonight will be automatically entered into a drawing to win a trip for four, full paid with airfare, lift tickets, and cabin to Whistler, Canada. Yeah. Never been to Whistler. Oh, it's awesome. True, you have. Yes, yes. a couple times. Fantastic. Good skiing over there? Oh. Really? Yeah. Yeah, mm. it was good times. All right. So, uh, again, I'll get more on board when they drop off the DVDs. i got to warn you, Drew and uh, Engineer Chris, i got gas tonight. You know, I was going to talk to you about this. I, I've noticed something. You have really been um, sort of woefully uh, non-productive in, in the Flatus department. And, and you know, <laughs> you're going to make up for it tonight. And you know what that is? What you're, is it? Your 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 tush is embarrassed. There's somebody sitting in the room. It's not just you and me. No, it, it's true. Oh. I've spared uh, young Chris, but it's more than spared. It's a little bit of a shyness. Well, normally you were you were blatant. I mean, pour it out whenever you could. Well, well, listen, to be fair to my sphincter, I've let a couple go since I've been but, in the new studio. But carefully, strategically, so poor Chris wouldn't. Chris, you're going to be exposed to some action tonight. Well, I may be. I may be gassed out. Are, are you prepared? I may be gassed okay. out. This is like a combat duty. I, I, you combat I was for this. blowing tremendous <laughs> gas at, uh, and it was right during the. Wait, why don't you light it tonight? You're set up for it. Uh, no, no. I only only light with denim. You um, know that. No, you know that. that. Was kind of denim you're Come on, Drew. I didn't realize it was that. I'm wearing. Pen. I'm. I'm. I'm wearing. You know this. This is. Oh my uh, God. No, this is a man-made fine. fiber you're, you're here. Nicely. What is that? What the nuts? No, pants. not the fiber. The oh, okay. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what I did. And 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 all right. And you tell me why this doesn't work. Okay. Right. Okay. I've not had a good gas bout in months. Mm. Months. But today, I was magnificent. <laughs> I was at the. I was at Kimmel's. We're having a writer's meeting. We're all eating lunch and sitting around a big table. I'm blowing everybody out. <laughs> people getting angry, people moving, everybody. Everyone with the shields calls. Shields, shirts uh, come sliding up. Oh. People doing their talking points and their jokes through their shirt that's hanging around. Oh, yeah. People moving to the other yeah, yeah, side of the room. Yeah, yeah. Destroyed the I, entire. I, I, I've witnessed your action, yeah. Destroyed the entire area, laughing like a hyena the whole time. Then we go upstairs in the office and blowing gas the whole time, right? I got great gas all day. Now, I haven't had great gas in a long time. No. Right, okay, here's what I did. Ritual, exactly the same. I mean, I mean, you know, night before, had a couple glasses of wine. I'm thinking these nuts. I had some problems today, too. I think these nuts we ate last night. Got up in the morning. I ate, I ate, I ate I know, thousands I know, of peanuts both, all the time. All both but how does this work? I get up in the morning. I normally don't even eat breakfast. I just have a cup of coffee and leave because I'm always late somewhere and I eat lunch over at Jimmy's. But this morning, um, uh, I decided to better eat a little something because I'm going to work out later. So I have a little bowl of oatmeal with a banana in it and a little milk. And I'll blow in crazy gas. Right away. Crazy gas. Uh, not right away. A couple hours later, but blowing novelty gas. Mm. Now, what is that? And and I know, like, you know, it's funny. People are like, normally when people get gas, they go like, I got to, I got to, you know, I got to keep track of what I eat. And my thing is, I got to figure out what I ate, you know, so I can blow up more gas tomorrow at the meeting. I have no idea. It was nothing. It was a banana with a little oatmeal blowing crazy gas. To me, it's not about what you eat. It's about what you're producing. Well, yeah, irritability. I mean, uh, why does it change? Bowel, why does it change? I don't know if anybody knows that. I mean, it's certainly swallowed air is part of it, and what the bacteria produce, and that's determined by what you give them. But it's not. It's not swallowed air because something was no. I know, in I, me. and usually that's it was like alien. Eat. That's what you eat usually. But also, irritable bowel syndrome can uh, stir it up a bit. So. Farts never smell or rarely smell. Don't give me that puss. They, it, admit it. Gas rarely smells. And, and you're, then, in, your it, in my humble opinion, in my world, you know, they just don't. There's some guys, every every time something comes out of their ass, it smells. Me, I let uh, 30, 30 just 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 poof, poofters for every, for every one fastball. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just air. Okay, so uh, all of a sudden one day, Pow. Pow. Smells like hell, and then eight months goes by, nothing. Gotta be what you have for, what you have for dinner last night. Nah, 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 nah. I, I uh, salad dressing. Or... You know, I ate, uh, ate some of the rest of that uh, there you go. Mexican, Mexican food. food. Uh-huh. Nah, I, 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 I do nothing but eat Mexican food. I eat everything. It doesn't do anything. And I, I, dinner, was, it was like 7 o'clock the night before. Mm-hmm. My, I'm not blowing gas at noon, 1, 4 o'clock mm-hmm. the next day, am I? Mm-hmm. 
What goes on? What changes? What's it different? Seems like there's a Mexican food expert across the table here is like going, yeah, 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 yeah. Next day. Well, listen, I, yeah. you know, I like to blame the Mexicans as much as the next guy, but I don't think the this one falls in their lap. Right. I, I really don't. No, when uh, Crystal Method brought the uh, uh, La Cabanita food in here, I still got a huge pile of it in my refrigerator. Did, yeah. I finished a pan off of it last night. I need another one tonight. Well, uh, see what happens tomorrow. It's a good experiment. Uh, now, it, it's not what I eat. I eat everything all the time and nothing. All right. Here's what so I'm saying. Value. All right, we're go, we're so going, you stressed? We're, you we're, stressed out about something? No. Well, I didn't go to court today. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe that was it. Yeah. I was all stressed out about blowing off court. And what happened? Well, Drew, you forced me not to. Yeah. I told him it was a $1,500 fine if I didn't show up today. And Is Drew that what they said, said? No, that's what the piece of paper says. And Drew said, that's nothing. <laughs> that's, that's nothing compared to the misery. At 10 times the price, it's a deal, right? Deal. No. Okay. Adam? What's up? You're 17? Yes, I am. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm literally a millionaire. I buy my way out of trouble now. That's good. You know? What's up? I'm like OJ. Huh. Well, first of all, I want to say that the man show has not been the same without you and Jimmy. That is a shock. Go ahead. And <laughs> but what thank else? you. Uh, but my question is that, uh, uh, okay, I have a, a girlfriend of mine. She's not actually a girlfriend, but she's a friend who's a girl, basically. And uh, we've been friends since about the third grade. Well, as, you know... We grew up more. She kind of got this thing for me, and I'm gay, openly gay, you know, mm-hmm. and she knows this, and I've told her this many times, and she was kind of cool about it at first. She told me, you know, all right, I respect that, you know, I'm not going to hit on you, but lately flirting has started to surface, and, you know, she's kind of found reasons for me and her to be alone, and, you know, I, I kind of told her, you know, I, I was on to her, you know, I said, I kind of get what you're doing, and she denied it, and you know, I, I mean, I don't know. We've been friends for so long. I don't want to, like, deny our friendship or say, you know, well, I just can't be around you because, you know, you like you got because you like me. And I don't know. It's just it's kind of hard. So my question is. Mason jar. Yeah. Uh, it's you know, bogus. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? It's a bog- bogus question. Well, no, I haven't asked the question, really. Okay, oh. go ahead. Go ahead. Right. Yeah. <laughs> my question. Amuse us. My question Mason is, jar. Is, this Mason something, jar. Is, is, is it something that I should, Shut you up. know, Am I being too much of a hard ass by saying that, by like breaking up our friendship over something like this? You know, is is it something that maybe I should just kind of like, you know, brush off the shoulder and say, well, yeah, okay, she's got the hots for me. It's something Liar. to wear off, you know? Yeah. Formulating know. the question. It's, it's not, stick, not sticking together. And by the way, that's not a question. Yeah. You've been saying yeah. that for the last three minutes. Okay. Adam, it's not holding together. Mm. Oh. Bogus radar, you have to have at least one. What? What's that? I said, you guys have really bad bogus radar, I said, but I figure you at least have to have one for ratings. One what? One non-bogus that we think is bogus, you mean? Yeah. Uh, well, I'll you, go you with it. Least, you at least have to announce one bogus, I, you know, for rating purposes. Yeah, that's what we do. Drew and I sit around and talk about uh, what are we going to do to help ratings. Well, because there's, <laughs> there's some that I hear that don't sound Hold on bogus. a second. Chris, Engineer Chris, uh, you've, you've been our engineer for four months. You've never, maybe five, you never met us before this. Have you ever heard the word ratings come out of my <laughs> mouth or Drew's mouth? Do you think Drew, no, do you think I know what cities we're on and what ratings we get in those cities? Do you think I have any idea what rating we have here in Los Angeles at the mother station? This is precisely, Have you ever Adam. heard me mention anything to producer Ann about ratings ever? Or have, have any rating related or even show related discussion? <laughs> You've never heard us talk about anything other than uh, cars and my flatulence and how much we hate certain guests during the break, yes? So he's but, nodding his head. But this That's is good precisely radio. How, good for the ratings. This sounds precisely how Chris formulated his opinion about what it takes to be a great radio host. How dare people accuse us of caring about this show's ratings? I, Chris, I, I, would, I, would, I would venture to say that in the four months Chris has uh, been sitting in here like a fly in the wall overhearing our conversations. This is Drew. This is producer Ann. Probably nothing that ever involved the show in terms of what was good for it or bad for it or what ra- might bring right. ratings. Yes? Yeah. You, you mostly talk about your house when you're not on the air. <laughs> yeah. Mostly. Yeah. Yeah. They ever talk about anything oh. else? What do you think the topics? What would you say the three topics are that we talk about during the commercials? Your house... Um that's basically it. Well, we'll and coffee, too. Coffee. Talking about we'll, coffee. We'll, we'll carry on a little bit of whatever we just finished talking about. 
You know, yeah, for like a, a little bit, for 30 a, seconds. Yeah, yeah. And then, Maybe. then he breaks into the house. Yeah. Yes. But and then you, you go take a pee. You, you've never That's heard right. the word ratings uttered, have you? Never. Oh, okay. yeah. We, uh, we've, you've heard him talk about uh, our next door neighbor radio station. Oh, yeah. And music. Right. You're yeah. going to be all about that. Yeah. yeah. Arrow. Yeah. 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 They ever heard anything like me going, geez, I wonder how we're doing in <laughs> San Diego? It's comical. No. No. <laughs> and you do great show prep, too, Adam. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, buddy. All right. All right, I just I just don't want people thinking that we sit around and right. uh, you know we well, got we got to announce a, a bogus call. Once, let me let me once deal a, with Adam tonight. as though it we're real because that's All always right. important to just in case. Adam, I'm here. All right, so the deal is, uh, first of all, why are you so concerned? You've set appropriate boundaries boundaries with her. You've told her you're not interested. What, what do you care? Well, if she wants to tr- try to make overtures towards you, so what? It's not nothing's going to happen. Well, you know I'm that. Good. You made it clear to her. What what do you think is going to happen? That's as opposed to you saying, hey, I can't be your friend anymore. No, it's just, I don't know, I, it kind of makes me feel uncomfortable to know she's got a thing for me. But then again, I, like I said, I think about our friendship. I mean, we've been friends for, like, since we... If your before. friendship means so much to you, why can't you tolerate her having a crush on you? Because I, I don't feel comfortable with a, a girl liking me that way. Kind of like how straight men don't like gay guys who like them. Mm. You know, that kind of, that kind of makes yeah, me feel comfortable. Yeah, that's different. Well, not that different. But right. it's the same situation. Ooh, All right. All right. And the other thing is, who cares? you don't seem, it's hard, it's, she probably doesn't believe you're gay. She probably believes she can change you and this sort of thing. And, and you don't come across as, you know, sort of something that oh, people would experience. Oh, No, no, no. Please. And what I'm, being, I'm being stereotyping. And I'm, I'm saying, though, but, scarf. but but she may delude herself because of that into, well, this, I bet you maybe he's really not. Maybe I can change him. This no, kind of plus, thing. his name is Adam. Super straight name. Yeah, super masculine. I mean, that's straight, a right? hunky. Yeah. Hunky. Yeah. That's a virile, strapping, hunky, straight, you know, matinee idol, good looks kind of name. It's not, not, not no queer bait name. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. Do they, they use queer bait anymore? I don't think so. Okay. Brandon? Oh, what's up, guys? First what's of all, up? all the yeah. young kitties out there. First of all, this is one thing I have to say. Dr. Drew did this. How many years for free? How many years? Ten, ten dude. Oh, is ten? this drunken, Brandon? Is it, didn't, was this the same guy? Of course it is from last week. Ten. Yeah, you sound like a different person. Well, he's you're not quite as loaded tonight. Couple beers short. Oh, of me, I am. His name was Marcus, though. Ten. S- sounds like the same guy, though, doesn't it? Ten yeah. years. He did this for free, and if all oh, there's the slurring youngsters, kids can do this. Buy his book. Just that's buy right. His book. That's it's a great nice. book because you know what? I read a, par- a portion of it at the yeah. library. Yeah. And if you want to buy it, <laughs> sure. Did it did it discourage you from uh, in, indulging in your de- disease, or maybe well, you getting know, some the help for it? The problem was that uh, I only read a portion of it. Maybe if I read the whole book and bought it at what what, what stores? All the major Everywhere. chains. Uh, of course, all the majors. Was it Marcus or was it Brandon? Your, it was la- your last name was Marcus. No, my, my name was Brandon last week. No, I don't know. I I thought Brandon sounded familiar too, but Engineer yeah, Anderson know, said Dr. Marcus. Maybe Dr. Drew was a uh, Maybe I'm not remembering, but I it, was it was Marcus, Marcus for sure. And he was yeah. on the same line, and he said he yeah, was home. Huh? All right. Okay. It sounds like the same guy, though. Listen, Trunko, what do you need? I need you guys' help. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. Can, can, and? You do, can you guys do me a favor? Yes, anything for you. Can you just keep me for our next caller after your break? I know it's coming up. Mm-hmm. And see if I can help them. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, Brandon. You've won a Cabin Fever DVD. That's right. <laughs> well, look out. <laughs> we certainly have. All right, hold on a second. Yeah, I, I'm guessing you don't have a DVD player, Of course, Brandon. I have a PlayStation 2. Cabin Fever right. oh, yeah. DVD. Yeah, you, perfect. You can play. Oh, you yeah. see? It, it, it is work. Yeah. It fits. It, yeah, <laughs> see, that's how you know people aren't lying. You're like, why does a loser, drunken uh, loser uh, like Brandon have himself a DVD? And then you go, PlayStation 2. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. PlayStation 2 will play uh, DVDs? Yep. And play them right on that set there, mm-hmm. huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's take a quick break. We'll hang on to Brandon. He can uh, help out our next caller. Yeah? Uh. All right. After this. <laughs> hey, everybody. Love line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Ron Jeremy is going to be in here tomorrow night from the Surreal Life, which uh, I'm uh, I'm very I'm you liking? very hot on that show. Yeah, watched uh, <coughs> the first episode, uh, which aired 
This is last night, night before. Monday night? Mm-hmm. Tuesday night? Anyway, good show. Mm-hmm. And he's good. Mm-hmm. Comes across good. Or comes across well or something. So anyway, uh, he'll be here to uh, tomorrow night and talk to him about his penis. I uh, still have a replica of his penis at my house. It scared the S out of your house cleaner, didn't it? She found it, yes. Mm-hmm. She, I just, God knows what she I... knows. She doesn't talk, but she's, uh, she's seen things that well, She doesn't talk to you, but when see. she leaves the house, she talks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, well, there's all kinds of weird stuff, which I give her all my extra T-shirts to take to her husband. And... Uh, I give her a whole bunch of these. I got a whole bunch of masturbation is not a crime t-shirts. And uh, he uh, doesn't speak any English, and I'm guessing doesn't read much. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he went ahead and wore it to work, Uh-oh. and uh, they sent him home. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you something about uh, how sad. Uh, anything sadder than the uh, refrigerator in a radio station's kitchen? Yeah. Is it always a sadder? disaster. Anything it's, sadder? It's, it's... And it rivals... You know, the frat house yeah. refrigerator, oh, no. the junkies refrigerator, the down and out single dad. It's sort of all that rolled into one. Yeah. Yeah. And it and it's bizarre That's because basically we have working at a radio station. Let's be real here. I know you got a lot of un, uh, you know, the unemployable who are magically employed and it, it, the radio station is sort of the it's sort of like video stores. Like these people are not fit to work anywhere else, but somehow they can do it. It's like uh, the old uh, Oakland Raiders. They take all the cast-offs and misfits and somehow mold them into a team that's about 500, actually. They don't win any Super Bowls. I, for some reason, uh, just opened the refrigerator back there and uh, was throwing the milk back in. I saw a can of uh, ravioli, Chef Boyardee ravioli. Course, and I, yeah. first, my, I was, my interest was peaked because I thought to myself, what kind of retarded adult eats this gruel? Mm-hmm. Like, here's the thing. Uh uh, SpaghettiOs, you know, Chef Boyardee, any any pasta that has been uh, floating in its own sauce for a few years before you crank it is uh, not fit for a dog. Well, and by the way, uh, not in a jar, in a can. In a can, yeah. in a can, and not only that. Listen, radio station. It's not like we have kids work here. It's not a bunch of kids. It's not like well, that's probably one of the kids. One one of the nine year olds probably left that behind. It could no. be Striker. It, it could be. It could be. I mean, but average age at this radio station is a 31, 32 years of age. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Can of Chef Boyardee ravioli, which is uh, just, you, you have to be a uh, super albino, clear, translucent trash to open a can of that. And, and by the way, just, you have to be retarded. There's something wrong with your brain. That, number one. Now, here's the real kicker. It's half, a, it's half eaten. With the lid on. No. 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 <laughs> it drew, I'm going to get this can. Is I'm it? getting the can yeah, because you you're not going to believe yeah, you gotta it. you got to get it. Chris, okay. Chris, go get the can. Come on. Chris, no, yeah. I'll get the can. Chris has got a job to do here. Yeah. Chris has got to run the Unlike board. Unlike you. Okay, you go out to, out to the calls. Yeah, I'm getting this can. Wait, I, 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 I was going to take can. Brandon. I was going to take Brandon, but I'm going to uh, talk to some other of our callers. This is a Matt 25. Matt? Hey, how's it going? Good, um, what's up? I have a question. Me and my girlfriend disagree on something. I think I heard um, somewhere that if you uh, raise a kid wearing uh briefs it's you know from when it was born or when it's old enough to wear briefs that there's a higher chance that it'll actually go uh, sterile or you know have less of a sperm count but if you raise it wearing boxers it's uh you know penis may actually grow at an awkward angle or something like that no I heard that all... from, do you know who dr dean adele is i know dean yeah. yeah i think i heard that from him when i was a kid well when i was younger I could see where they could make an issue about the sperm count because yeah. the hotter the testy, the more lower the sperm. But that look, there's a whole industry around infertility right now, and they're not telling you, uh, gee, don't raise your kids. You know, I mean, that's not that's not one of the recommendations to decrease the risk of, of fertility problems. So yeah. that's ridiculous. Yeah, number I didn't think two, it's a big deal. We're not, you know, oh my debating God. what to raise a kid with. Number two, this business of a Peyronie's type syndrome with boxers. Also, uh, you think there'd be a warning on the boxer if that were the case? No, no. Have you ever heard of that? There's millions of people wearing these things. Mm-hmm. Has anyone you've you met ever had a problem with this? But then again, no. everybody. And by the way, no. and by the way, that would encompass all males. All males would either be infertile or have a crooked penis, right? No, well, because, it, because it, they're either one or the other. True. Listen to reason. Like I said, like I said, the okay. It's not that they cause every person that wears briefs to go infertile, but there's a chance of it. And what I was saying about the boxers, actually, most kids are not raised wearing boxers. They're generally all raised wearing briefs. 
uh, go to boxers mm, as they get older, from what I've seen. Yeah, but they, they go at a pretty young age many times. And, uh, yeah. Sure. And, and so the point Through is... It was four months. So, so all males are having a problem with their with their penis and fertility? Right. No. Why, why are we entertaining? Ridiculous. But this is making me vomit here. This is making me vomit. This I brought the can of yeah. uh, Chef Boyardee yeah. ravioli and meat sauce yeah, in let's, from let's the refrigerator. Let's describe this. Well, first off, like I said... You should stop eating canned raviolis when you stop eating SpaghettiOs, which is when you start having solid movements. Right. And that is about four and a half. The other thing is is the can is half eaten and then saved. And by the way, I'm not sure what how much you're saving at the bottom of this can, but yeah. uh, 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 what is there about three four. cents worth of food? There's like the three raviolis in the bottom. There's three raviolis at the bottom of the can. And what is it? what's being used to seal the can? A... a there's something stuffed into the a can. A crumpled up paper towel stuffed has been into uh, the can shoved into the, of the into the can. Look at no that. Luck. And there's a lovely nose to it, too. The odor is quite, quite, li- quite uh, yes, exceptional. Yes, this is in the community refrigerator. Now, yeah. here's the thing. When I'm in charge around here, you're gone. I don't care who you are. I don't care if it's uh, Kevin Wiley, the program director, Trip Reeve, the general manager. You're gone. I see this. This this to me. This striker, you're gone. Is this stri- That's not my ravioli. Drew, you are supposedly my friend. That is not my goddamn ravioli. Oh, this isn't yours? No. Well, I try to think of somebody who doesn't, who eats, you know, pablum and things like that and nothing else. No, not you? <laughs> Look, you, do you eat- all my other boyfriends, I've only given them hand jobs. <laughs> Oh, hey, right. Stryker, please, we're going to talk about food. <laughs> do you, That's your sexual proclivity. Stryker, do you eat Chef Boyardee? In my life, yes. Is it in my cupboard? Yes, but it's probably... Oh, 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 my God. Oh, oh my God. It's in your cupboard. Stryker, by the way, uh, for those of you uh, around uh, the country, is the uh, is our, our beloved DJ who, uh, who uh, keeps the seats warm for us here at the mother station of K-Rock before we uh, triumphantly roll into the studio every night. And even though he's a man of 30, he eats... Like an eleven-year-old, possibly younger. I yeah, can't, I can't believe sex like Ron Jeremy, my friend. How old are you, Striker? You got to be thirty. Yeah. Thirty years old. I know for a fact he makes decent money, and he's going out and buying cans, eighty-nine cent cans of ship boardy ravioli. This is what homeless people are supposed to eat. <laughs> you, you, you understand this? This this is what you're supposed. This is what you're supposed to rattle a can for to get enough money to go out and buy one of these and heat it over a sterno can in the park. You see what I'm saying? That 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 bring home to your palatial condo, striker. Ever, ever since I told you I didn't eat cranberries, I feel like you've been giving me the cold shoulder around the. That's building. right. That's right, striker. We no longer have anything to talk about. Well, okay? next Thanksgiving I'll be at your house for the cranberries. All right. Well, listen. Right. It's it, a date. You know, it's uh, it's a few months away. It, well, I'll, I'll be. I'm going to mark it on my calendar, homeboy. And listen, I would yeah. like to like you. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but it's when I see hear you talking about Chef Boyardee ravioli and uh, your uh, your your blatant uh, jabs at uh, my beloved cranberries. Well, that's right. when we have to part ways. Okay, Adam. Look, with all, all my right. other boyfriends, I've only given them hand jobs. All right, Striker, That's please, we're still on the air. All right, Striker. All right, buddy, God bless you. All right. God bless the Striker. Okay, so, well, it's not his. All right. I'd like to get to the bottom of this. Let's, let's and, d- and, dust it Can I friends. throw this out, or is somebody going to be angry that there are three raviolis that they uh, jammed the paper towel into for a lid? And, dust the <clears> prints, come on. Yeah, you can't, look, Here, anyone knows, any good bachelor knows that when you open a can and you don't have a proper lid, you have to set, like, a styrofoam takeout container or something. You have to set, you balling up a, balling up a paper town and shoving it in there with your fist is, what the, this is the work of a, this, this is the work of a madman. Yes, it is. It's All scary, right. it's going to have a scary feel to it. It really does. Yeah. It, someone among us, producer Ann. I would think Lauren. Engineer uh, Lauren, <laughs> no, that Lauren. somebody among us is is just crazed enough to eat this and store food this way. Oh. All right. All right. Now, you, now we were going to let Brandon answer. This I'm scared one, to go right? to the bathroom, Drew. Yeah, it's uh, dark. The halls yeah, long. I'm not. I, the maniac gonna, could be waiting in one of the stalls with the feet system, up. Buddy system. All right. All right. All right. So Brandon, Chris, right. if something happens to us, it's your show. Okay. Cool. <laughs> For the remainder of our contract. All right. Do it. Do whatever way. Any way you want. All right, well, should we get Brandon on first? Yeah. Brandon? What's up, guys? You're 21? Now you're going to uh, talk you, to somebody. Brandon, yeah. you're drunk? Yeah. yeah. Oh. What'd you do? Did you hang up on Brandon? Oh. Uh, Are you? Oh, true. 
Drew, you hung up oh on both God. of them. Well, this is an, this, why, this why, is an uh, abortion, Drew. You're trip. supposed to let me do that, Drew. Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought we could still do it from the same. Yeah, I got, Mar- I got Marcus from last week. Here we go. Ah, you have you have some nice cars. You have a nice woman. Ugh. <laughs> that sounded <laughs> like the same guy, same didn't guy. it? <laughs> let me tell you something. It wouldn't hurt any of us if once in a while a drunken Marcus slash Brandon called us up and went... You, man, you got money, you got a hot chick, you got, oh, man, yeah, dude, you know what I mean, like, I got, I got, like, after hearing that, I was like, yeah, yeah, I do, <laughs> that's, uh, that's me, all right, I guess I do, yeah, you know what I mean, you could do worse, Brandon, call you up. Even even if you don't have that much going, we line him up. Like, Brandon, all right, here's what I want you to do, you know. Call the guy up. It's like, dude, you got a moped? You got a Parcheesi board? You beat him? Oh, Ooh, yeah. Yeah, you know, this like make, makes you feel good about yourself. No matter I, what. I felt great after I was done talking to Brandon slash Marcus. All right, so now Drew hung up on both of them. <clears throat> Bad times. Norma? I mean, Norman? Yo. You're 22? Yep. What's up? What's up, Adam? How's it going? Good. All right, so <clears throat> I've got this girlfriend. She's 18. and I've, I've been dating her for a few years, and her parents are going through a, a wicked divorce. Mm-hmm. So our sex life thus has been stunted terribly. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to... I mean, I, I, how can I... I, I want to be there for her and whatnot, you know, but I, I'd like to get laid as well. Ooh, well, how, what do you mean stunted, your your sex drive? No, 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 our sex life. Yeah, what do yeah, you mean yeah, like I, didn't, I didn't mean that. I screwed that up, but I mean, yeah, your sex life. She, she, well, I don't know. She just is, like, uninterested. And, I mean, she's gotten, she's also, yeah, she's just been uninterested. And, uh, so you've had no sex since the uh, horrible family problems? Well, <clears throat> yeah, pretty much. How long has that been? Well, I mean, the, it's been about three months about without sex. But I, and, and you were having regular sex with her before that? Yeah. Mm, she may be packing up. <laughs> right. I mean, does she seem a little more distant? Well, she's. I'm going to see her tomorrow. She just got back. It's been a month since we've seen each other. Uh-oh. She, Seems mm-hmm. really excited to see me, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Why is it? Why has it been a month since we've seen her? Yeah. Oh well, it was winter break. She was in Israel, and I was on a cruise. Hold on, is she fr- she's from Minnesota. Yeah. What, well, what, what percentage of Minnesota packs it in and goes to Israel for the? Let's say about sixty percent in seventy ja- percent January. What the hell? She's gonna be the only. It's like uh, she's got to show up to the airport, like at the uh, Minnesota International <laughs> Airport. Yeah, I'm going to Israel. What the hell? What? <laughs> Uh, no. Uh, what did you say? Did you say Iowa? No, no. Uh, Israel. Huh? Where is that? <laughs> <laughs> like, they must not even know where that is. All right. Well, good times. So she's Jewish chick, huh? That's right. Uh, yeah, their folks don't get divorced quite as often as us, uh, us, uh, goyim, as uh, they call us, you know? <laughs> For us, it's an everyday thing. Like, you're, are your parents divorced? No, no. I'm Jewish, too. Oh, you're oh. Jewish? Yeah. Holy Christ. They got a lot of Jews in Minnesota. All two of us. Wow. Yeah. It seems it seems cold there. Yeah. And and the whole like ten thousand lake thing. Wait, what? Jew, Jews are big in England and water skiing and ice fishing and ice fishing. <laughs> fat, fat, and fat. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no Jew in the right mind that's ever been ice fishing once. I've never been. Yeah. All right. All right. So listen. Uh, you can talk to her. I mean, you can have an open dialogue about it. I mean, you could say, "Look, what are, where do we, where yeah. do we stand? Are What's you going depressed? Yeah. What's going on?" I mean, give her give her a chance to come back and. Uh, she may have been packing you. in. Maybe she's back now. Maybe she's more engaged. It's you know, uh, if she's depressed. That uh, needs to be dealt with. Uh, when I was young, if I got in a little, you know, problem, uh, I'd head down to uh, Israel, clear my head for a Would couple of weeks, and get come a back spiritual about eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, mm-hmm. go hit a uh, wailing wall. Go, uh, go to some, uh, you know, go to the temple. Go find uh, Christ's uh, birthplace. Uh, where's that Bethlehem? Yeah. Where's that in Israel? That's uh. uh, you know, take a uh, take a leak in the uh, Caspian Sea. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Just, just sort my head out. Yeah, you know, get my change head, everything. Clear, clear my head out. Yeah. What's my dad doing in Israel? All right, let's take a quick break.
Yeah. And then we'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 LV. Porn star and uh, all around good guy, Ron Jeremy, in here uh, tomorrow night. The Hedgehog, as he's known. I uh, got a little uh, thing going on, a little promotion going on with uh, Cabin Fever, the uh, horror movie, which is uh, out on uh, DVD. Which is uh, anyone who calls here tonight who's uh, over the age 18 is going to get themselves a DVD copy of Cabin Fever. And then you'll also be. Uh, and by the way, this thing's got the uh, crew comment. Crew commentary. What is that's a selling point? It means the back, the back behind the scenes commentary. Some guy with that duct tape hanging off his cutoffs uh, telling me about what it was like to a uh, key grip. You got a lot key to say. grip's going to tell you what what the uh, craft service table was like. <laughs> <laughs> they had uh, peanut and regular M and M's. It's cool. Uh, anyway, commentaries from the actors and all that, and uh, they're all. Uh, it's uh, you. It. Well, it comes out the twentieth, I guess. The, the DVD itself, but the coolest thing is the you, yeah. you all will then get put in a drawing, which will be done on January twenty fifth. Yeah. To win a all expense paid ski vacation for you and four of your friends. No, four, four, three of your friends. Right. To Whistler, Canada. Amazing. From wherever you are. Drew's been there. It's amazing. Air airfare and uh, lift tickets and a cabin where possibly you'll be killed. No, no, you got a flesh eating virus. Flesh eating virus, yeah. but that kills you. Yeah. But let listen. Is 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 like where's Whistler? Is that what's that rank British for you? Columbia. Is that good for you? You like yeah, Whistler? A lot. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, really nice. Yeah. I can get out that way myself. Yeah. You know, you got to land up there. I'm keeping it real. I do. Seattle? Do you land up there? In the yeah. Oh, it's near Seattle. I've never been there though. Oh, there you go. Austin? Oh, it's near. It's near Seattle. It's yeah. yeah. Austin. Hello? Yeah. Hey. Hey, you're 16. What's going on? Um, uh, I lost my virginity last Friday. Yeah, congrats. Thank you. And, well, in the in the whole process, like, I never come, like, to the whole thing. Mm-hmm. All right. And I wonder if that's normal or not. I, I, yeah, I, no I, one ever comes during sex. It <clears> never <throat> happens. No. Yes, no. It, look, here's the thing. I'm trying to think. Um, I would say in terms of guys losing their virginity. The first time out. First time out. Okay, here's I would say here, about that, that. Okay, here's I'm gonna break it. I'm gonna break it into. I'm gonna break it into three categories without telling me. And I'm, I'm, gonna, not, I'm not gonna tell you. That's and why I'm, I'm gonna predict this down. All right, first is erectile, erectile failure. No, no, I'm not gonna do it that way. No, these are my three categories. You just go along. I'm gonna put the uh, has an orgasm in a sort of normal time. It has a, a, a normal what oh. you would c- call just a normal yes. sexual right. encounter. Too long or too fast. Yeah, just somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Then there's too fast, and then there's not at all. Yes. All right, mm-hmm. let me work this out. And this is out of 100%. And this is first time out or just... <laughs> first time out. This first time is, out. Uh, I'm going to change that. That might be a little high. I'm going back. All right. Uh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do uh, normal. Uh, do about... Uh, four, five. Now, now, I'm not exaggerating here. I'm going... Uh, uh, Going real here. Okay, no wait. Yeah, I'm back. Okay, all right. Okay, I'm ready. Math. Okay, ready? You ready? Yeah. All I'm right. Say, go ahead. Twenty uh, percent are satisfied with their performance. Mm. Normal. Well, well normal. normal. In the normal range. Uh, thirty yeah. percent too long. Fifty percent too short. Well, no, it's 50, not. It's 20, not too 30. long. It's not too long. It's not at all. Or not at all. Oh, not at all. Can we put it? No. In? I already decided this. All right. Fifteen percent not at all, and fifty-five percent too short. Okay, well, now, see, I had 15% not at all. That's what I said. I know. Yeah. That's interesting. And, I said, and I said 55% here. Yeah, so I said 40, I said 45 here. Although I was, I, yeah, you know, I, was, and I, I, I flip-flopped. I, as you see, I crossed yeah. out my 45. I was going to go with 50, but then I thought, eh, 30%. I got the, the, eh. I, it seems like, all right, it seems like almost half the guys have a, would have a normal experience. A little less than half, but not a ton less than half. I don't think it's 30%. All right. You know. But be honest, so the point we're making is that men have all kinds of uh, performance problems first time out. Erectile dysfunction, orgasmic, you know, too short or too too fast or too slow or not at all. Mm-hmm. So that's very, very common. It's not normal, mm-hmm. right? But right. nothing is normal about your first time out. Right. So so don't worry about it. Yeah. That's interesting that uh, we've never, I've never asked you this question and we had the same number, an odd number of 15% for the uh, guys who never have an orgasm at all. Yeah. You know what that means? 
That we're, means <laughs> means we're both geniuses, <laughs> and it's exactly fifteen percent. Right. That's right. <laughs> that's what it means to me. Right. Zach. Hey, what's up? You're sixteen. Yeah. You have a Germany or Florida for us? Yes, I do. All right. So, in either Germany or Florida, people are mm. going wild over porn karaoke, in which couples are judged on their ability to moan, grunt, and squeal during a one-minute muted movie sex scene. Comedy. Oh, I see. They, they, oh. Yeah. Oh, I go Germany. Oh, yeah. I did, uh, I, you know, this, it ends up screwing you up more when you realize you'd heard this story and then can't remember which oh, one's really? from. Because then you go, wait a minute, I think it was, I think it was, I think it was. Yeah, Germany sounds good, but I think I remember Florida. So, um, Drew's going Germany, I'm going Florida. Germany. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You see, I got screwed up because I'd heard the story about mm-hmm. three months ago at the uh, writer's table and uh, thought it was from Germany. Sounds funny. Or from Florida, I should say. It's kind of funny, it's isn't it? Funny. I mean, you could go... You could, the, Creative possibilities are. Endless. Well, you know, it'd be great is if I was singing the theme to Taboo Two. To Taboo Two. He has it. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. During, during you know, the... it's a bad song when you hear "Yes, he does." <laughs> People answering their own statement. You know, uh, uh, he knows how to please in every detail. Can... What's my favorite part of that song, Drew? Uh. You thought that you know him, but you don't. But you, you don't. don't. <laughs> All right. Quick break. We'll be right back. Uh-huh. He only reveals what he wants. <laughs> we just got to get to the part that's my favorite part. That's way ahead here. Yeah, that's all right. I, I, I just like I like uh, when she says, "Yeah, just let it let it play there." Yeah, here we're getting to it. He only, oh more than you ever. This taboo. This taboo two is a great movie. It's about oh yes he does. Oh yes he does. That's there the part. Is. Thank you. He does it with style. He does it with me. Oh, yes, he does. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's good writing, Drew. <laughs> Somebody's jealous because, uh, <laughs> because you flunked out of uh, opera school. All right. Still a good movie. And, uh, by the way, uh, tomorrow night, uh, a uh, young Ron Jeremy in that movie. Mm-hmm. I got to talk to him about that. You've talked to him all about it. Yeah, I know. I like I got, it's. <sighs> I have to remind him what movies he was in, number one, because he's made like 1,700 movies. And uh, number two, <clears throat> I'm still looking for Spank Me, F Me. <laughs> which, he was supposed uh, to get you that, I thought. Yeah, a lot of talk, that uh, Ron Jeremy, but not he's a lot in the action one. department. Yeah, oh, so make Spank Me, F Me has uh, Minka in it. And I've been wanting to see this ever since I saw the. Uh, it got like uh, three boners and half a ball <laughs> up in the uh, Hustler rating. You know, they. <laughs> Oh, they're very clever, aren't they? Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good times. Oh, you ever read those? No. Oh, they're great. No. It's like, first off, every every uh, racial slur in the book, like, you know, Minka, it's like gave her the mooshu pork and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. God. By the way, she's like Korean or something. But, you know, in, here's the, in the eyes of the porn readers, it's like you, you just got to stick. You got to pick one Asian. You, you can't start getting spread out too thin with your, your nationality characterizations. You know, you just got to stick with Japanese, and that's good. You know, so every movie she's in, it's like uh, mounting Fuji and, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, right. so a lot of that uh, a lot of that stuff. All right, so where are we, Drew? Remind me to get that spank me, F me from uh, Ron when he comes in tomorrow. Christy? That's the first thing yeah, I'll think of. That? Please. You're 20. Um, okay. I was born with a very high drive, um, mm-hmm. but I've always gotten raw easily, maybe, I think, because I took the pill for a while. Um, Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're already sort of off into assumption land. Uh, you were born with a high drive. Oh, no, I, I well, I I guess God destined that I would have a high sex drive when I you weren't, became you weren't sex sexually death. you weren't sexually abused, weren't exposed to sexual material at a young age. Um I was Okay, well very that's not, little, not all right, that much. that's where that comes whoa, from. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean very little? Like um 
three isolated incidents, and it wasn't with a, adults or anything. It was mm. like with like a neighbor and a friend. Oh, uh, listen, we can't question God's molestation schedule. Yeah, let's just move forward. Yeah, I'm so the really horny sexual <laughs> or premature sexual sexualization results in well, high or low or back and forth. Well, sex maybe drives. she did it because she was whipped up as no, a, a no, 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 ah, no, maybe. no, no. Look, her name's Christy. No. Your name is Christy, right? Yeah. That's a hot name. All right, so there you go. So something happened to you, and that got your sort of uh, mm. wiring set up. She can be, she can be a little hot anyway. All right, and then and what? And then you said something about taking the pill made you go well, too I, long. I well, I would want to have sex a lot, but I would get raw easily. So what does being on the pill have to do with that? I don't know. I thought that it would make you dry. I don't. I don't know. Uh, the progesterone in the pill can make you sometimes make people dry. All right, but well, that, leave her alone, Drew. No, so. but I'm trying to. She's yeah, all over the place. What, what's up? Okay, so I, um, I, I also, I stretched and played with myself a lot to prior to losing my virginity because I was afraid to bleed. Hold on, I will tie this in, and um, then I would play with myself with like toys and vibrators and whatnot, and. You know, I'm very careful with myself in regards to SCDs and condoms and all that, and I think that I might have kind of made myself larger, and I'm wondering if, you know, now it's not really that painful for me to have sex, even though I get, I'm get i kind of drier, and I'm wondering if that's why girls don't like to have sex as much because, it, you know, they're smaller and it hurts too much, and wow, my, my boyfriends have been very polite, and they haven't told me that I'm large, and I've asked them specifically, and they haven't said so, and I'm just wondering if that's kind of why girls don't want to have sex as much. No. But let's... Uh, Christy, Christy, wow. Christy, you got, you got bigger wow. fish to fry than whatever your question yeah, is. Yeah, your thinking is all over the you're place. You're a little scattered. Sorry about that. That's all right. Sometimes you're on the radio get a little nervous. But here's what's going on. <clears throat> you uh, were diddled, for lack of a better term. Eh, I, you know, it's not the same. Kid on kid is uh, nowhere near as bad as uh, old uh, Uncle Lou on top of you. But something went on in your childhood, and it may be a combination of a few things, that have uh, gotten you uh, some energy around your vagina, trying to yeah. stretch it out, asking guys uh, about the size. Yeah, the size does, has meant nothing. Preoccupation yeah. with the vagina. What do you think happens after child delivery? Oh, Christy. yeah, good point. <laughs> okay, yeah, it well, goes back to normal. All right. So goes, anyway, goes Chris, you got, you got, there's a little energy here. Oh, uh, huge. Well, all right. So anyway, listen, baby doll. Mm-hmm. You have a boyfriend right now? Um, No. Okay. And then the other thing about why women aren't as inclined to have sex. Listen, if guys' penis fell off after sex, they'd still do it. Yes. The, the drives are totally different for a male and a female many times. Mm -hmm. Okay. And guys come in one sort of version, and theirs is to, you know, they, they jump off a cliff or whatever they had to do. Yeah. Women, it's not the same biology at all, mm -hmm. most of the time. Although, in her case, there is this sort of, see, what she's describing is somebody who can't be satisfied, basically, which is the sexual abuse stuff. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, just uh, a little therapy for Christy. Oh, yeah. And stop oh, yeah. obsessing on the machine. She's bipolar. She's so disorganized. Leave that to me. Huh? So this guy's been on hold. Weren't we going to talk to someone who uh, we said we'd call back or they were going to call back last night because they're on hold for like 90-something uh, oh, yeah. minutes? Brian? Yeah, what happened to that? That was a young girl, I think. Ryan. Yeah. You're 19. Yes, I am. You uh, tore your foreskin after having sex with a girl who wasn't wet enough. Yeah. Yeah, it it's can actually, happen. It's, like, it's not the foreskin. It's toward the base of my penis. Oof. Wow. Wait a minute. Yeah. The, the, no, it's the ba there. base of the head, not the base of the penis. No, base. No, you can tear. The, you can take and get irritated and tear a little bit down there. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. How do you? You're going deep, buddy. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you got to really, you got, you got to really be going for it, right? I mean, it, yeah. Generally, yeah. Yeah. That's not a flattering story. Like, like <laughs> you, you, there's stories that make you seem like you have a small penis. Like this I got one of got my balls caught in her vagina. <laughs> like stuff like you gotta keep that to yourself. Oh, yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like when I say uh, I'm taking a dump and I'm taking a leak at the same time and it's squirting out of the yeah. into my pants. Yeah, I was thinking about that. I thought to myself, you, you think? You think I think it was kid? nine last year. Yeah, yeah, it was nine, nine last, last child. Child. Yeah. It can happen. It can happen. You know what I mean? But it, if I were in Alaska it, sitting in an yeah. ice fishing camp, <laughs> sitting on an ice storm, yeah. <laughs> you're taking a crap in a frozen river. All right, so listen, Ryan. Yeah. 
I, the, but the area underneath the penis where the balls are attached? No, on the top. Oh. That side just gets kind of... On the top. Yeah, I can do it. I can... It's probably just an irritation more than a tear. He's There's just nothing rubbed, to tear rubbed, there. Rubbed raw. Yeah. Huh? You can tear yeah. anywhere, but... There's nothing to tear there. It's right, you just rub it raw, you're talking. I'm on it. The scab on it? Yeah, you just... Rub, well, it could be... That even could be herpes. Yeah, look on the bright side. Could be herpes. Well, I've had a, uh, uh STD test, and I came up negative. What'd they test you for? I, I don't know. They... Okay, well, they, they, there is no test for herpes, really, that's reliable, A. B, okay. hopefully they tested you for syphilis, which is a blood test. A syphilis could uh, cause a scab. They did do that. And then the uh, chlamydia test they can do, and gonorrhea, just with urine now. And, uh, yeah, so it was the top part that got, that got, got irritated. irritated. Yeah. 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 Right. And yeah. she was dry and just, you know, that, yeah. that happens. Yeah, Imagine gotcha. happening to her. Oh, my God. Ouch. Yeah. Sometimes uh, they get uh, they get a little uh, shaving stubble or something down there too. You know, it can wear off. Here's the whole thing, everybody. Uh, when you're humping, it's dangerous, and I'll tell you why. It's like it's like uh, you you know you come home from the dentist after a mouthful of Novocaine and you start eating. Mm-hmm. You could easily puncture a hole in your lip or your gum. You can bite yourself. That, not, you don't you know, know it. Second overtime of the New England game, and you're your quarterback. You're numb. Yeah, you're, you you're, don't know to right. stop. You don't know when the pain because uh, the endorphins are pumping. Mm-hmm. You're feeling pretty good about yourself, and that's where it's like. I know people like uh, banging doggy style on some bad uh, rust colored shag. You know, they stand up, their knees are bloody. Mm-hmm. Believe me, if you were working, you know. If you were putting some carpet down or looking for your contact lens and your knees started to get bloody, you would stop well before they got bloody. You'd, you'd be on, you'd be irritated. You'd mm-hmm. be like, ow, this hurts. What, what's going on here? You can be humping, wear, wear it down to the bone, not even stop. Yes, yeah, true. Mm-hmm. Remember those days? I, that's why I don't have a patella. You don't have a patella? No. Was that a kneecap? Mm-hmm. Patella. Calling all nerds. Hello. Taylor? Hello. Hello? Who is it? Who's this? I don't know. All of a sudden it went scratch and then went sheep and then someone said hello. I thought someone cut into my line. No way. No. You smoking pot, baby? No way. I don't do drugs, but that's why I'm actually calling. All right. What's the question? Okay. My brother, I just want to get some, like, I guess, family direction and family advice. My brother's fought his whole life. And he went through a really bad divorce, or he's going, he's like in the process of it. And my mom and I suspect that he's doing other drugs. So we've both, you know, talked to him about it. And he said, he hasn't actually, he hasn't confirmed it, but he hasn't denied it either. He just doesn't say anything when we ask him. So Mm -hmm. that tells us that he is. The problem is, it's not so much that it's him, but he has a two-year-old son. And that's everything to my mom and I as well. And we just want to know the right people to get help for him and to know in the right direction of who we should talk to. Well, like, I really don't know this area because... Well, know, wait I, a second. Did uh, did he say he was doing drugs? He didn't say it, but... but okay, my, my sister-in-law was, like, she was doing... She was addicted to, like, whatever stuff they give you for migraines, like mm-hmm. Percocet and, like... Demer, I don't know, whatever, some stuff right. that they give you for migraines, and she always, she was addicted to pain medication, and I've never known my brother to do coke or speed, but he acts, that's what he acts like, and my mom, my mom just knows, because she knows my brother, and I guess supposedly he brought it up to my uncle, and just like through the family, like word of mouth, it got to my grandma, and my grandma's like, your brother's doing coke, your brother's doing coke. We just don't know who to talk to, like who. Okay. I, mean, I, I was a child I counselor for like 10 years, but I've never had to deal with like an adult who an adult would go to All if right. they were doing drugs. All right. Well, he needs to Drew's come in. Yeah, you. he needs to come into a program and spend a little time. Now, who do I call? Like, is there like a 1-800 number? Is there no. Any- uh, it would, you, you can call his insurance company and see what he's got covered, what hospitals in the area that... Uh, would cover his treatment, and they just take him there. But company. he has his own business, though. Yeah, but I'm sure he has an insurance. Well, have a health insurance. Not necessarily. Does he have insurance, you think? I'm not sure. 
I'm sure he has health. And Taylor, all right, Taylor, is really you, you're trying to orchestrate something that you really can't. First of all, this, this he right. it's about him. You have to talk to him, tell him to get help, call his insurance company, get a place to go, and go. All you can do is a participate in the family component of treatment when when that time comes, and in the meantime, go to Al-Anon, get a sponsor, and work the steps yourself. That has the highest probability of getting him to treatment. That's it. That's all you can do. Beyond that, it's leveraging him any way you can. If he if he you know drives drunk that kind of thing you call the police you have him arrested so he gets the message he's got to do something. I'm arrested. Yeah. Yeah. You don't narc out your own yes, brother. If you're trying to save their lives, you do whatever you have well, to do. You get, get the five hundred two, a DUI, your insurance goes up. Mm -hmm. Come on, I kill my Probably sister. The, if she the did carnage that. Carnage of the disease. Yeah, it's I always it's it's uh you know I I was raised by. Uh, Aliens, so it's always bizarre to me when it's like my mom and I confronted him. Yeah, I was trying, uh, but Drew, I know you're the same in that. Uh, I don't think you've ever had a meaningful conversation with a member of your family, have you? <laughs> sure, I've had a meaningful conversation. Yes. Has anyone ever uh, given you any advice or like said, "Now listen, Drew, we're worried about uh, your mother and I have been discussing this." Have you ever had anything? You have. Hmm. Holy Christ! Well, I stand corrected. I've never had one of those conversations with anybody in my family. I mean. I avoid it, but uh, they have no idea what I'm up to. Mm. If, and I have zero idea of what they're up to, and that's the way we like it. It's perfect. Yeah. So you've had, you've had, well, you've had your dad like pull you aside and say like, "Son," but I mean, these are like your grades are slipping. Uh, no, really? All right. I'm gonna talk off the air. Huh? Mm. Really, I can't picture you having actual conversations with your family. They are conversations. They are. Uh, they talk to you. Yeah. And you sit and listen. Mm. But they, they, they hand out advice, mm -hmm. and they tell you you need to do this, and you should be doing more of that, and you're not, you're not uh, being enough like this. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, never had a conversation with anyone I found about anything. I mean, other than, hey, how's it going? It's going good. Going good? Good, fine. What's up? No, nothing. <laughs> I mean, you sure you had a family? I don't know. I mean, we talk about stuff, but no one ever said, like, are you getting enough of this? Are you doing that? Are you on this? Do you do that? What's the deal? You're going to get married. You're going to have kids. You're going to do this. What are you going to do for a job? But then you have insurance. Never had a comment. Never. Never never about education. Never about, like, not auto normal. insurance. Not normal. Oh, that's not normal? Hey, well, listen, Taylor. Low maintenance. Um, you know, I don't see Annie. I want to give her. Can you, can you give her this? Let me give you a phone number over there. You can call right now if you want. It's 626. Three five six two seven eight nine six two six three five six two seven eight nine. Talk to you some more about what needs to be done. Uh huh. Who's doing the talking in your family? Is your dad doing the talking? Mm -hmm. Mom. Too? Everybody talks. Really? Mm -hmm. Just talking at you, dad and mom. That's the other thing too. If your parents get divorced, you don't have to deal with them. Ah, because when they're also they feel so guilty then that they let you do whatever. Yeah. Maybe that's why they didn't talk to you. They felt too guilty, overwhelmed. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's more apathy than guilt. But the the point is, is when your parents are together, they sit around. They they, they lie in bed at night. I don't know. Gang up. I'm worried about true. Yeah. What what, what um, <clears throat> what's that, honey? <laughs> well, his grades haven't been what we know. Oh, we pay a lot of money for that college of his. Yes, I know, and he doesn't seem grateful. Well, we'll talk to him next time. See, when they get divorced, there's none of that. Right. You, your mom's uh, just got some uh, hippie slackers. Uh, he's, he's he's caved in on the sofa, drunk. Uh, your 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 dad's trying to nail some uh, chick who's twenty years younger from work. They're busy with their own crap. They don't even know who you are. There isn't a, no part. They don't have. You're not a common topic anymore. Nancy Drew, your parents should have got divorced. They'd be much better shape. Dan. Hello. You're twenty two. Yes, I am. What's up? Um, well, I uh, I'm a virgin, first of all, and I just wanted to say, I with my girlfriend, we didn't have sex, but I I don't know how to say it, but I asked her, well, you know, and I have bumps on my penis now that um, mm -hmm. weren't there before, and I wanted mm -hmm. to know if I could get something from doing that. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's a, you know. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the uh, the TFing. Yeah. The, uh, TFing. Yeah. Yeah, thank here's you. here's the reason. Because there's no fun. there's no alternative for the term TF. Really? There's no boob screw. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't just, well, I I I bang there in the jugs. Bust mm. bang. Bust bang. That's Still, they take it. As we did, because, see, around here, that would take a while to process. Like, someone says, I was bus banging. I think you were doing drugs. I just made mm. it up. 
Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Anderson. I knew you didn't do it as kids. <laughs> All right, so look, here's here's the uh here's the deal. I remember as a kid thinking about that going, Wow, who would let me who's gonna let me do that? And whoever they are, it's gonna be good. <laughs> Watch out. Watch out. Got a lot of love saved up for that woman. Well, how could you possibly get an S T D from that? I I can't even it, it, you creatively can't, you can't. come up with a way. You You're just it's skin against skin. Yeah. Right? Dan? Right. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I guess. I mean, she right, won't it, even give me oral sex. So yeah. So, but I mean, what are you freaking out about? I don't understand this. Well, uh, because could, there's something on my penis that wasn't there before I did that. I mean, I've only done it once too. How long ago did you do it? Uh, it was maybe four days ago. No, this is this is bogus. Something's wrong. Something's wrong with this question. I I don't know what it is, but there's something wrong with yeah. it. You don't get anything from that. No. God wouldn't let that happen. No. You know what I mean? This is a beautiful no. moment shared between two people who love each other. Hmm. The uh, the effing. God would not rub his filthy, herpied hands on a beautiful moment like that. Not my God. That's for damn sure. You know what your other problem was growing up, Drew? Hmm. Your parents uh, did stuff. Hmm. They like, uh, you let you use a car, uh, Sent you to college, right? That means they can. That means they can do some talking, right? Right. That's right. you're gonna do the same with your kids. Oh yeah. You just boot your kids out. They don't do anything, right? You can't talk. You, you have no leverage. No privilege. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You talk all you want, old man. What are you doing? Yeah. I'm what going, what do you, what I'm going back to lately. my crappy apartment, right? And uh, on my uh, on my enduro motorcycle. <laughs> Screw you. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. See, Drew, you should you should pay your own way through college like I did. Oh no! Wait a minute! I didn't go to college. All right. Uh, a little junior college. We got to take a same break. Thing. Same thing. Same. I got the same education, true guy. No doubt about that. When we come back, we're going to speak to uh, Amanda, who's 20. Not in love with boyfriend anymore. Stays with him, or at least unfair. Okay, so she's 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 keeping this going. And they think they're doing it because they they like the you know it's like ah, I can't I can't hurt him but really you're dragging it on. Oh, he's just is driving the knife in. And during that time when you're just staying around, believe me, you're torturing him. Uh, oh, and believe me, he knows. Yeah. Drew, I mean, I don't know. I, I've had countless relationships where that part starts creeping in. And, and it goes for like a year or so. Yeah, it can. And, and it, here's how it starts. It, 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 it starts with, you know, it's like, look, when you're firing on all cylinders, when things are working, you can call that person up at Friday at 830 at night mm-hmm. and, go, and go, what are you doing right now? And they'll go, nothing. And you go, I'm coming over. Great. Pow. Now, when when S ain't working, you call Monday. Like, listen, Saturday, how about some dinner? Saturday. If, if they repeat uh, if they repeat the day that you said, it's always bad. And then here's where guys like Adam and I go with that. We we start getting insane. Uh, I'm, I'm coming over there now. Okay. What, are what are you doing? What are you doing? What's up? You you yeah. So is that? I hear I hear a man yeah. breathing. Yeah. I'm coming over. Right. And that's now, now you're like now you're in that mode. Until the the bands, you get in the bum rush mode, yeah. and now you're you're completely you're out. panicking. What are they doing? What are they up to? Oh, they're panicking that they're going to leave, and you're trying right. to you're trying to reel them in all the time. Right. All right, all right, oh, it's horrible. All right, okay. Now I'm totally depressed. Okay, but it's all right because we'll go to the bathroom and yeah. we'll do a uh, ceremonial uh, and symbolic cleansing in the sink. Okay. Oh, in the sink. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'll, I'll use the train. Use the sink. That'll, that'll do it. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna baptize myself. Oh, with in urine. No, not my own urine. Uh-oh. I don't always be in the sink. Oh, and I don't do it in commercial buildings because uh, the bathroom, the counter, the, the oh, sink is set back away. like eight inches from the edge of the counter. And I can't. I think they're trying to discourage people like me. I see. I will take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody! It's Love Line. Thanks for listening. Phone number, 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Big promotion, cabin fever. That's right. Everybody, Are we still doing that? Yeah, we have one more to do this. Oh, okay. 18 go. and over uh, gets a DVD of the movie Cabin Fever. Everyone which comes who calls. Out. Everyone who calls who's 18 or over. Will, and this DVD oh, is no, coming everyone out. Everyone we talk to. Yes, everyone we speak to. And, you know, at the rate, I like to tell personal stories. It could be three of you. We'll, we'll give away like yeah. half a D. We'll give away D. V. <laughs> A TV. Uh, the DVD itself comes out January 20th, and those of you that win the DVD tonight get put in a drawing to win a trip for four 
airfare, tickets, lift tickets, ca- and a cabin in Whistler, British Columbia. And let me say this. It's a great resort. I know you guys, you know, everyone sits home and they think, take more calls. Yeah, Stop everyone. this incessant everyone. rambling. Yeah. Yes. The nasally oh. drone oh, of God, this you man. Know that. Oh, my okay, God. Okay, but. Think about the people that are going to be in the running to get the uh, tickets to Whistler. Here's the deal. Normally, you'd say, well, over the course of uh, four or five days when we do this promotion, oh, there's going to be hundreds oh, given away. Oh, I see away. one as few as possible. Well, yes. it's just I take three calls a night. Yes, it increases your probability of winning. Two of the calls are people under 18. Uh-huh. So when, when we finally pick the thing at the end of the week... You got like a thirty-five percent chance of going to Whistler. So keep up rambling, Adam. That's right. That's what I'm saying. Unfortunately, most of us are not in this drawing. So uh, the eight that are see, in the drawing will be wishing for you to ramble. All right. Yeah. I won't filibuster right. any longer. Right. Amanda. Hi. You're twenty. Yes, I am. What's up, baby doll? Nothing. Um, first of all, um, it's not that I'm not in love with him anymore. It's that I never really was. Oh, that's even better. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and second, yes, it has been dragging on, but I have approached the subject with him. We've talked about it. He wants to work it out. No, Amanda. Yeah, but <laughs> of course he wants to work it out. He's in love with you. He has a different perception of this relationship. You have to slam the door shut, block up the keyhole, not leave a possibility of this going any further if you're out. Why? It's why unfair you, to him. Why did you get together with him if you never really were into him? Oh, uh, well, we were friends. And it just kind of developed. And mm. I did were you, were you rebounding off of something? Yes, it was. There you go. <laughs> well, there you go. Listen, all you screwball 20 year old chicks, you were trying to fool yeah. me? Yeah. We're friends. It just Who do you think you're talking into. to here? No, you. You, you, you need you, a life preserver. Yeah, you had, you had a bad boy screw you over a little bit. And this guy was so loving and so there and so consistent. And, and by the way, she just thought he was just such a good friend. Maybe he was waiting for this moment. Never, this guy would never disappoint you. You got with him, and now you're disappointed. But think about these, the diabolical nature of males. Waiting yeah. like a lion in the brush for that yeah. antelope herd to come by. And as soon as the one with the broken leg heads out towards the side, pow! Yeah. That's Amanda. <laughs> Listen, you know what you need to do to him? Here's, your, here's right. what you need to say to him. You say, look, let's get philosophical about this whole thing. You're not really my type. Oh, don't, was, no, 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 no. Just no. listen. I, I was, I was never interested in you oh. I- much more than a friend. But you got to nail me a handful <laughs> of times, and that's going on your permanent record. And feel free to beat off to that, whatever you like. Uh, so now, instead of crying over spilled milk, you could think, well... The glass is half full. I got in the pants of this hot chick I'd been pining for for a number of years, and uh, we had a few f- few good rolls, and that wasn't going to last. Yeah. But it could have been. We could have just stayed friends. Yeah, but the guy that's going to pull that friend waiting in the brush ain't mm-hmm. the guy that's going to take that kind of uh, directive. You, you guys were together for a year? Yeah. All right. Amanda, just you yeah. got to say, it, look, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm Are you out. interested in somebody at work? No. Who else? That's cool. Who are you interested in? Um, somebody, but it didn't work out, so there's nobody now. So you went, you went ahead and cheated on this guy anyway? Oh, uh, of course, more than once. <laughs> All right. All right. You, this, this is why this well, is mean, why the guys are freaking out when they feel the girl pulling away. Yeah. They know this is what's going to happen. All right. No, All right. Listen. Guys do the listen. Same thing. No, 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 no. Listen, different, different. Evil cat like eyed devil lady. <laughs> <laughs> you tell him it's time for you to ramble. Yeah, yeah, you are being extremely, extremely unfair to this guy. Yeah. You, this is ex- destructive behavior for him. Yeah, she's like uh, she's like one of these uh uh She's uh, queens from New Orleans. We, they, we would say the same thing. She's of, like a Cajun queen from New Orleans. <laughs> we'd say the same huh? thing. Yeah, that's good. Good yeah. reference. Yeah. We'd say the same thing to a guy who was cheating. Just hey, cut, let cut her loose. You're not. You're being destructive to her. And, and the guy in this condition who had pined for you and now is clinging to you. Ah, oh, that's it, just a mess. It's clearly rambling time yeah. for Amanda. And while women and don't don't, don't ramble, normally ramble. Don't ramble by finding another penis and rambling with that. Yeah, that's bad. That'll hurt the guy more. Just Get ramble because you're rambling. That's it. You got to go. Oh, you're rambling, and woman. Slam the door. Do not leave the crack in the door. All right. No emails. No phone calls. Yes. No nothing. Six months. Drew, as bad as it is, uh, getting dumped. 
Nothing worse than dumping somebody else. Is there? Yes. There is? Getting dumped. Getting dumped. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Javier? Hey, what's up? What's happening? You're 24. Yeah, what's up? What's going on? Just yeah, I got, a, I got a question. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Me, me and my wife have been married for about, i say, seven months. Hold on. I was just thinking about something. Uh, <laughs> nationalities that uh, can't ramble effectively. Asians. They, they're not good ramblers? They can pick up and leave, but they can't ramble. You don't hear you, you don't hear a guy you know named uh, Toshi rambling. No Moisha rambling either. It's time for me to right. Yeah, it's time 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 for me to put on my uh, sandals and ceremonial robe and headband and the rising sun on it and and ramble. No, yeah, there's no uh, no Jews, no Asians, not good rambling. Rambling is basically the domain of the white man, but the black guys are, do a fair amount mm, of rambling good too. Yeah, they're they're good. good ramblers, yeah. and they don't they don't announce it, they don't brag about it like the white men. They quietly pick up and leave. You know the the uh, Hispanic cultures tend to stay put too. Yeah, they're not ramblers. Yeah, they like to stay and cook. <laughs> yeah, Chris, our uh, our uh, engineers <laughs> got a little Latin blood in him. You you no good for rambling. That's not your thing. You you guys, here's the thing: you ramble over the border. And you you put stakes in the ground, you set up, and that's that's it. No more rambling now. White guys ramble, and black guys ramble. Well, you know what? The rambling rambling Mexican, is really people no rambling. that don't have Jews don't ramble. Yeah, it's it, well the, the the non ramblers are the ones that make a high priority of stable families. Well, right? I mean, well, you, you, yeah. you can't have a stable family if you're rambling. There's there's I don't know if you've ever heard the uh, '70s uh, rambling. It was there was one Jewish rambling song, which was uh-huh. I asked my mom if I could ramble, and she said no. <laughs> You remember that one? Yeah, I do. Yeah, so I stayed. I stayed home. She said I could ramble, but I had to do it in the backyard, and then I had to come in when the street lights came on. All right, all right. <laughs> Javier. Yeah, what's up? You a Latin brother? Uh, I'm Hispanic. Hispanic, beautiful. Yeah. Okay, not. Don't try to ramble. No. <laughs> okay. It's not a good rambling breed. All right. And part of the rambling is the rambling is passed down. I mean, he the, the yeah, Hispanic your, your families dad, are very yeah. stable and large. Yeah, and, your dad would have had to have been a rambling man. Yeah. Too. Uh, yeah, he kind of was, I guess. Oh, he was. I don't know. He well, a true, was. a true rambling dad, you don't know. You, yeah, you wouldn't have yeah, no, who he, he was. rambled. He's too busy yeah. rambling. He delivered, just dropped off some sperm and left. That's right. He rambled. <laughs> yeah, Go ahead, Javier. Okay, yeah, me and my, okay, like I said, me and my wife were married. Uh, I said about five months ago, like into our marriage, um, she finally she found out that she has herpes, mm-hmm. and but yet I don't have them. How did she find this out? Uh, she found it out. Because she broke out a little bit, and she went to a doctor, and and they they she told them what she had, and they said, well, that's what you have. So did they come back? Did they come back? No, they haven't. No, she's been taking medicine though. Uh, to to uh, suppress it. Yeah. Well, here's a couple. I mean, she's been taking a pill every day. Yeah, she has been. Valtrex. Um, I don't know what kind of pill. It's a blue one. It's like yeah. must be a wonderful kickboxer, by the way, because I've seen that commercial. Well, yeah. there's one of two possibilities here. One is. That she had it for a long time, didn't know it, had an outbreak, which happens. Something like 30% or more of women that have it don't know they have it. Right. Uh, for whatever reason, didn't pass it to you, and then got on a antiviral medication quickly enough that the virus got suppressed and, again, not being passed on to you. Or they got the diagnosis wrong. Well, which happens a lot. It happens a lot with her. Well, pain. what do you mean? It's something else? Oh, it's oh just, they, didn't, they misdiagnosed it the first time. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, and, well, all right. Or you, do you think she's been rambling behind your back? No, no. I've asked. I've asked her that t- thousands yeah. of times. Well, she cool. did mess around like before we were married um, with two other guys. But yeah, well, she has. Well, that, seen that's them. not. Hold on. Well, wait a minute. While you guys were dating, or no, 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 no. This was way before. This is. Like oh well, uh, yeah. Ago. All right. That's not. You're allowed to do whatever you want before you get married. Well, and by the way, right. when I hear stories like that, I, it's like to me, it's like an alcoholic estimating their drink consumption. Yeah. Just multiply times five. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, he messed out one, maybe two guys. Okay. Yeah. And also, you can, I mean, it's possible, you can get this stuff from, uh, I don't know, where well, else? more importantly, no, no, more than like not, that. They, people can have it and they can lay dormant for a long time. They not know they have it, and uh, that's that. Yeah. That happens a lot. All right. Uh, we're talking about that? Yeah, 117 minutes there, old uh, and- Andrea. I'm going to hold for 117 minutes? Yeah. Wow. She's not a rambling gal. She's not going anywhere. Andrea? Hey. Hey. 13? Yeah. 
Wow. No cabin fever for Andrea. Yeah, you got to be 18. You call back in five years. We'll give you a DVD of Cabin Fever, and I'll kill myself if I'm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. What's up, baby doll? Um, I was just wondering if I should continue a relationship that I've been having with this 20-year-old guy. No. 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 Very easy. No. He's a bad, bad boy. Wait till you're 20 and look back uh, and think about the fact that you were dating someone 20 when you were 13 and who that guy would be. Yeah, but he's only who of your 20-year-old peers? Who of your 20-year-old peers would date a 13-year-old? You will vomit when the time comes. What what grade are you in? Eighth. Eighth grade. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And that is uh, that is scary. And and uh, furthermore. Well, let's see. I guess uh, our eighth graders will turn 14 toward the end of the year. When you, When's your birthday? Uh, it's in July. In July. Yeah. Christ's sake, a young, a young eighth grader too. Yeah, I mean, should could seven. should oh, oh, hold on a second. Yeah, that's the thing. You, you're dating a seventh grader. Think about that. Mm -hmm. He should be a senior in college. Yeah, and if if you were in school, I yeah. guess he's an Ivy Leaguer. Yeah. But the point is, is Seventh grader? Yeah. yeah. What, what's this guy do for a living? Uh, he doesn't really do anything. Shocking. Wait a minute. I'm shocked. Oh. I he works at his um, dad's shop every once in a while yeah. when he's forced to. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. So this, what, what's, what's this guy's happened a drug to you? Addict, what do too. you hate your parents? What? Where are your parents and why do you hate them so much? I don't know where my parents are. Are you in the system? No, I was kind of adopted. Uh, well, 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 you were adopted by those of your parents, the people that adopted you. No. Why? How old were you when you were adopted? What? How old were you when you were adopted? Three. Three? Mm -hmm. You don't look at those people as your mother and father? No. Why not? Because I just don't. Oh, okay, hold on. Well, that Let me explains write this it. Down. Okay, wait, wait, wait. She doesn't consider them, right? She doesn't consider them her parents because she just doesn't. Right, slow down, slow down. Maybe you thought you knew her, but you don't. Right. Uh, Andrea? Yeah? Well, I understand you're angry, and, you know, maybe you have the right to be, and especially uh, given away at uh, age three. Did your mom give you up at age three? What? Did your mother give you up at age three? Uh, yeah. All right, so she was some sort of junkie or something? Yeah, she was, like, addicted to every drug out there. Wow. All right, so... That's tough, but what's, and I know you're angry at uh, whoever the uh, person uh, over uh, 30 that's closest to you is, but what? what, stop saying what. I'm not. You're not saying what? Unless Anderson's playing. <laughs> Were you dropping that in, Anderson? Only once. Okay. She has been saying it a lot. Though. All right, listen, Anderson, please don't do that. Can you <laughs> please not do your own show over there? What? Oh my God! Did you get enough with last night dropping in uh, Max, Max's voice? Um, all right. I'm sorry. Max just had a kid. I wanted to pay him tribute. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, th th write him a goddamn note, would you? He named it Adam. All right. Well, say I said hi. <laughs> Let's finish with Andrew. No, She's I'm really not so disturbed. Now. We're not discussing. It's just a sad, I'm sad, angry. sad situation. I'm, angry. I'm going to the bathroom. What are you mad about? I'm, 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 I'm You're out of Anderson, but, but yes. Andrea needs uh, needs some direction. All right, well, she can hang on. I gotta go potty. All right, All right we'll be back. <laughs> hey, everybody! Love lines. You know, uh, you know, the only thing worse than you know, I listen. I got this uh, car now. I listen to satellite radio in it. Yeah, boy, the only thing worse than commercial radio is the satellite. Oh, guy. really? <laughs> oh. oh no. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 These guys are bad. But let's get back to Andre. I'll tell you one thing that's good. They're not uh, pounding the traffic and weather up your ass every ten yeah. seconds. It's a separate channel. It's a separate channel. Yeah. yeah. You're like, what's this? We're hearing another song. Oh. And they play commercials on some of the satellite stations. Really? Yeah. But they don't do that. Hey, we got to break away for weather traffic coming up. Blah, 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 huh. blah. we got a rock block coming up. Blah, blah, blah. Rocktober. Blah, 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 blah. No, they don't do that. Huh. They just they play their songs, and then they go to commercial with a certain quiet dignity, and then they come back. It's not all that stupid. Uh, 
I, uh, all right. Don't get me going, Drew. But I, I do. I have a visceral anger. You know, I, yeah, I, get, I start getting angry. I oh, yeah. Start getting angry. Andrea. Yeah, Andrea. 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 Yeah. Andrea. Oops, I pressed the wrong one. Andrea? Yeah. All right, okay. so you're 13. What are your parents doing, your adopted parents? Why Why do you hate them so much? I, um, they, like, give me no freedom. Yeah. Well, maybe they're worried about. Yeah, uh, maybe they're worried what you if need. they let you out, you'd you'd climb on top of a twenty-year-old guy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. And maybe do drugs. What? And maybe do drugs. <laughs> well, wait a minute. What um, What is that? <laughs> what is maybe? Um, I do. But that's my point. Your parents are trying to contain your behavior so you don't harm yourself. Uh, yeah. Drew, let me say this. If I adopted uh, Andrea when she was three. And now she's like uh, banging some twenty-year-old and doing drugs and all pissed off and defiant. Like you're not my real mommy. I was like, hey, here's what I would do, I said, baby. Uh, get in the car. We're going to Disneyland, and we pull right up front of the adoption thing and be like, hey, I'm taking. I know. I'm taking her back, and I'm dropping her off. Uh, I'm sorry. It didn't work out. She was cool. Like we had, we had a good Christmas. We're cool. We're cool. When she was about seven and a half, we had one good Christmas. And, uh, but really, she's a disaster. Like. I gotta be honest. We're not really equipped for this. We didn't know. It's like well, like returning a puppy. Well, this to is the interesting. Pound. You make an interesting point because uh, I, bet, I do that. Well, Andrea, I bet between zero and three, you saw. Maybe you don't remember, but I bet you have a sense that you saw a lot of horrible stuff. Yeah, like yeah. I had to watch my brother being molested. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and so by the time you were three, there was so much severe trauma that. I mean, uh, you know, a team, uh, you know, an entire team of uh, mental health workers and psychiatrists were, would have trouble putting all the pieces back together again. And what what I find amusing is the parents that pick up kids like this and go, well, we're going to love them, and then everything's going to be fine. Yeah. Well, well they kind of adopted yeah. the person who had me before they adopted me. Mm -hmm. Do you get that? They adopted, adopted your mom? Yeah. Oh man. Okay. Well, well, look, it's all bad. It's all tough. At least, at least you had a roof over your head, and you have. And here's what they can do for you: that all the love in the world isn't going to change what's happened to your brain and your soul as a result, and your spiritual self as a result of this horrible, these horrible traumas. But they can contain your behaviors, and they're doing that, and that's hard work. It's much yeah. easier to let you run like a feral child yeah. uh, with your 20-year-old buddy. Oh. Believe me, you're, these people are trying to do what's good for you. I, and you, I, you need no. to really... Uh, and you, you, Andrew, I will the only, dart my kid if they pull if this there's crap. any possibility of a 12-step of a program for you or you know something where you can get connected with people who've been traumatized and are doing drugs, and there are other ways to handle these feelings you're having. Mm-hmm. So uh, really tough, really bad times. Oh, uh, I feel but like first they, off, there's not a 13 year old chick that doesn't hate everyone around him around anyway. Yeah, but imagine between zero and three, what she saw: the drug addicted parents, the brother getting sexually abused, the uh, uh, violence, and uh, moving. Oh, what God. is it about chicks when they're 13? They hate everybody. My sister hated like ah, oh, she hated my stepdad, mm -hmm. she hated my stepmoms. Like they hate, they just can't stand everybody. And I was like. Look, uh, they're, you know, they're no great parents, but they're, they're not doing anything. They're just some dopes that got tied up in this crappy family. I feel sorry for them, really. Oh, I hate them. You know, it's like they just, they just look around. I, what is that? Is it the bad wiring they have? <laughs> they're, they're, they're wired like a, uh, they're wired like a, uh, like a British sports car from the uh, late 50s, early 60s. They could just get those bad parts in them. They don't work out. All right. I, that's what I do. I dart her and put her down for for months. I freeze her. Andrea? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Tasha? Yeah. 16. What's, What's up? up? Nothing. All right. Well, um, next call. <laughs> I yeah. was wondering if you're considered a virgin if you've had oral sex. Yes. Technically, yeah. And it, it's just interesting, though, how virginity has become a technicality and not sort of a, a reflection of chastity, which is what it was originally intended to mean. Yeah. And uh, oral sex, historically, is something that came after intercourse. It was considered more intimate. Mm -hmm. And so by sort of historical standards, it would be sort of bizarre even to ask that question. But yeah, technically, you're still... You had... Sure. You both uh, did it to each other? Basically, yeah. Uh, All right. Well, you'd still time. be a virgin. Who are you worried about? I just was wondering. Just for yourself? Yeah. All right. Still a virgin. Do you want to, do you want to hang on to your virginity? Yeah. Okay. Good. For hang, how long? hang on tighter. For how long? Uh, I'm like eighteen. Almost. Eighteen. Okay. Well, keep going. Your your but your grip is loosening. Yeah. 
Okay, baby. <laughs> do we have some of the smartest callers in talk radio? We do. We do. You know, these uh, these uh, right-wingers, these uh, Limbaugh's of the world, or these uh, Sean Hannity's, or these guys who are their... Uh, they're the politically driven, right wing, you know, white male, forty something year old demographic uh, shows on. Uh, they do it on uh, AM radio. They think they have a smart, educated audience. I put their audience. I put our audience against theirs. Oh, any, any, day. any day. They, any they day. wipe it away. Yeah. I, I had a debate on, on CNN tonight with a guy named Armstrong Williams, a black conservative radio talk show. Uh, yeah, really, a really interesting guy. Yeah, a little fart go there. Yeah, what? What was his thing? They were just talking about teen pregnancies. What do you think? He called me an enabler. <laughs> it was very enabler. funny. It was very oh, good. Oh, because you tell people to put a condom on? Or? Yeah, because I was saying that we should let kids leave school and come back if they're pregnant. You know, they go get you know get their training so they don't start falling out of the system and they don't have another kid and just you know end up being more screwed up people, more screwed up kids. Right. He uh, said, "No, no, it's got to be. They got to be shamed into into this." And uh, yeah. and I'm an enabler in them. It's very interesting. It was fun. It was fun. Where? Where is yeah, it? I said, "Yeah, I'm an enabler." Yeah. Good times. Yeah, good times. Alex. Yeah. You're 18? Yeah. You get physically nauseous when you see ex-girlfriend around school. Yeah, um, or just anywhere, you know. Yeah. How long have you been broken up? Uh, since, like, early October. She broke up with you? I broke up with her. Did you? Why'd you break up? Um, we were gone for a while, and then, um... Oh, that explains it. I see. Well, it was just, I mean, I liked her a lot at first, but she grew kind of attached like really attached and it freaked me out. How dare she? Out. How dare she? Yeah, and uh, <laughs> no, I'm um, like she warned me too. She's like, yeah, in past relationships, you know. Oh, you, so you're not nauseated, like you're nervous and upset. You, you're nauseated. You actually don't like her. No, no, no. Well, here's the weird thing. Like, I grew to not like being in a relationship, but none of it really made sense. And then afterwards, like seeing her at all right now, like she's, I mean. She's kind of unstable, you know, a little anti-talkative, but, like, it's, it almost feels like it's just, um, you know, instinct. You hate her. Hold on a second. No, 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 no. No. Like, right, listen, thank Christ there's about six seconds of this show left for okay, I go home and I'll, I'll, I'll put my it, brain of all you idiots. I'll put it this way. I, f I feel like I hate her, but if you add everything up, I shouldn't. Right. Well, this is this is basically envy. You're, you're so, you've, you've been anybody that would want you has you have to first of all get rid of her. You have to kind of soil her. You have to demean her in order to deal with the departure. And then also sometimes people have a certain uh, quality where if somebody's willing to be close and intimate with them, there's something wrong with them. They they're spoiled by that. Die, buddy. So it's a, e either case, not the greatest uh, emotional impulses. Let's take a break. Eh? Yeah, we'll be right back. That's the show. Amazing. Amazing. All right. Well, listen. What do we do? We gave away a uh, DVD and a half of the uh, Cabin Fever. At least. We give away uh, the other one and a half tomorrow night. Then you have three to draw from. Fantastic. All right. Uh, the Hedgehog. You know him as Ron Jeremy. King of all porn. Tomorrow <laughs> night. So until next time, Adam Crawler for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. What? This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.